For those of you that stopped by today to check out our content, and if you enjoyed what you've seen, hit subscribe and then hit that bell for notifications. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I hope you have a beautiful day. All right, people, let's get the show on the road. Today, we're going to be talking about one of these special indie projects that seems like it happens like once every 10 years. It is called Bright Memory. It's one of those things that look like it's made with the AAA developed budget, but it is actually made with the budget and developed by a single man. His name is Zen Yi Cheng. If I mispronunciated the name, I apologize. Kill me in the comments. But it looks really good in terms of graphics and gameplay. It runs on the Unreal Engine 4, and it was built using only blueprints in a mirror development. Now, this was only done in the man's spare time, which means he actually has a job. Bright Memory is so impressive that Epic Games recently awarded him on the spot for the latest round of their Unreal Dev Grants. Little is known about the game mechanics itself, but looking at the vi video that we got here, it's a first person shooter that you can use your guns, but you also can do sick ass combos with your swords. It'll be a single player and provide a pretty linear story, so that's not bad. Let's see what this guy's writing skill is, you know, because his developing skills look awesome. Um, it was inspired by games like Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, Future Soldier, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. The game is targeting the release of later this year on PC with the support of Oculus Rift. So, you people with virtual reality helmets, you finally got something to look forward to. The next story comes from Twitch. Yesterday, they announced that they managed to gain exclusive broadcasting rights to the Overwatch League, a deal that apparently came with an expensive price tag. The exclusivity deal apparently ranged up to $90 million and is meant to secure them at least two seasons of broadcasting rights. The price tag came via Sports Business Daily, which made the report on the deal. It is one of the biggest deals in esports history. Whether or not the deal is beneficial remains to be seen, but it's sure to improve ratings on the website overall. The Overwatch League has quickly become one of the most formalized, popular esports around. That said, it stands this deal has made Twitch the third-party cable of streaming matches. Half of the season will also be shown on MLG.TV, Activision's first-party streaming service with the first watch going live tomorrow on the 10th and it's worth nothing that it remains unclear whether or not this deal covers the streaming rights with overwatch as twitch has announced previously that it would like to work with activision on some other kind of program to reward its fans now there was another thing that came out um there's exclusive skins that you can get that supports the esports league and they're five dollars per team and each of them's got like this cool little customization thing um, other personalities such as Jim Sterling did not find this cool. He thinks it's utter rubbish. But we'll see what happens with this esports league and I'm excited to see what can come from it. Alright, so I was about ready to upload this video today and we got hit with the Nintendo Direct. So I decided to sit there and analyze the video. And we'll start off with the Square Enix game that came out, The World Ends With You. And that game is going to be a rehashed DS game that launched back in 2008. The developer has rarely delivered its protagonist, the ultra-hit Niku, with tiny cameos in other games. The World Ends With You remains one of those rare classics that never received a follow-up. An upcoming Switch release? We'll see. It, it, when I was checking it, a lot of people were hyped for it. I have actually never played it. We'll see where it goes from here. I, I'm kind of excited, because when I was looking at it, it looked like something that I would play. The next game that came up was a lot of them actually, and they were ports. Uh, we got Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, which uh, includes both features of the Wii U game, or the Wii U variant, and the 3DS variant. So it's going to have best of both worlds. Uh, we got an upgraded Donkey Kong Country top, Tropical Freeze, and we got a Pokemon Tournament DX. Um, two new characters are coming Agislash, Blastoise, and then you got uh, two new people, or I guess not two, but four new people mega Rayquaza, we have mew we have celebi and then we have mimi q now with these uh these ports are kind of controversial some people uh don't like them i think it's going to be a great chance for those people that did not want to sit there and take a chance at the wii u and i don't blame them if they didn't it had a very rough life but for those people that now have a switch have the chance to get some of the gems that were in the wii u and I'm honestly excited enough to get Pokemon Tournament again after seeing the new DLC. It's going to be like they discovered it for the first time. So a new Mario Tennis game was um, announced today. And when you think of Mario Tennis, there's two games that come to mind. Mario Tennis 64 and Mario for the Game Boy. 
In my opinion, the Game Boy was the best one ever because it had such a cool RPG-esque elements on it. The 64 version didn't have a story mode. But now, the Nintendo Switch has announced this brand new Mario Tennis that has pretty much both of the, from what it looks like anyways, has the best of the both of those two games into one thing. It's going to have a story mode, and it just looked awesome. I was, I was completely at odds with it. I can't wait to, for it to come out. I'm going to play the crap out. It had Luigi in it. You just talk to him, you get to go to the new world, and it's pretty much just getting you into speedrunning from what it looks like. Another thing that came out was Mario Rabbits. It had Donkey Kong in it. Who is it going to love that? That's going to be sweet. And then to end everything off, they, they, they showed some, uh, they showed some Payday 2, which, eh, I, I didn't, I don't really care about that game. I, I don't know about you guys, Payday 2 was, wasn't really something I was like, yay, I can't wait to buy this game again. But then the last thing came out. Showed a dark room. Then it showed a fire, and then it had somebody grabbing the sword, and it's Dark Souls. Dark Souls Remastered is going to be available for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. Then there's a Switch. I mean, if you guys already had it before, you, you kind of know what you're expecting, but the fact that we can get it portable, it's going to be amazing. Guys, that's all I got today for our news stories. Hopefully you enjoyed our show, and I'll see you guys in three days. Hey, you guys are still here. I hope you enjoyed our content as much as I did. If you guys did, leave a subscribe. If you guys still want to check out some of our previous content, check out our last video, and I hope I see you guys in the next one. You guys have a beautiful day.